Welcome back everyone to Paul's Tech News, where only the strongest tech news stories survive the culling process. This week, Google wants you to know that they're concerned about your privacy, now that they already know everything else that there is to know about your web browsing habits. AMD has announced their upcoming Radeon RX 6700 XT, launching March 18th for $479, presumably in some idyllic parallel universe where joy and happiness still exist. And our friends Tim and Steve over at Hardware Unboxed have completed the necessary incantations and ritual sacrifice needed to get YouTube to restore their channel, which was shadow banned for their own good last week. And we should all be grateful to even have access to this glorious and perfectly moderated platform for free videos. Oh God, YouTube, please don't ban my channel too. Excellent. The Thermaltake Tower 100 is a unique and versatile mini ITX chassis with a ton of features. Three tempered glass panels provide an ample view of your epic build. The vertical orientation means support for big three slot graphics cards and up to 190 millimeter tall air coolers. And every side and top panel is removable, which makes building or accessing the inset magnetic dust filters way easier. This case performed well in my testing, even with a high end 5900X and RTX 3080 system inside. And I like the full size ATX power supply support too. For more on the Tower 100, from Thermaltake, click the sponsor link in the video description. Google is making good on their promise to stop supporting third-party tracking cookies with Chrome, which will also affect Chromium-based browsers such as Microsoft Edge. With privacy concerns on the rise across the entirety of the internet, this could be seen as good news. Targeted ads based on your browsing history can often seem invasive, and most people would prefer not to be tracked if they have that option. Google announced that they would be phasing out third-party cookies last year with a goal to stop tracking users with this method entirely by early 2022. A blog post Wednesday added to this by explicitly stating that once third-party cookies are phased out, we will not build alternate identifiers to track individuals as they browse across the web, nor will we use them in our products. Now that sure sounds good, but don't take Google's word for it, as there's already plenty of skepticism about this decision. They'd love for you to think that they're doing it of their own volition to protect consumers, but there are plenty of other ways that they're still going to track you. And they've no doubt seen the writing on the wall as litigation and antitrust investigations in the EU and elsewhere elsewhere have already been pushing in this direction. Combine that with moves made by companies like Apple who have shown themselves to be big privacy advocates, and you can see what might be motivating these proceedings. For example, Apple's app tracking transparency feature is scheduled to be released in early spring, which would prompt a message asking users to opt in before allowing apps to track them across different websites. Or there's just the fact that savvy internet users like you guys are becoming more aware that you can simply bypass many of Google's tracking methods by just using a way better browser than Chrome, like Firefox, or the up-and-coming Brave browser, which is specifically designed to block ads and website trackers, although it is still based on Chromium. So tell your friends, use alternative browsers so Google is forced to compete for our business with consumer-friendly features rather than catering to privacy-violating mega-advertisers. AMD, meanwhile, has confirmed the price, specs, and launch date for their latest graphics card that you won't be able to find in stock anywhere, the Radeon RX 6700 XT, launching March 18th for $479. But wait, no, for real this time, maybe. AMD is promising to combat bots and scalpers by releasing batches of cards over time that are for sale directly on AMD.com, as well as allowing board partners to launch third-party versions of the card at the same time as the reference design, just so there are more GPUs on the market in general. And they're teaming up with 40 plus system builders and OEMs who will offer full gaming PCs with a 6700 XT installed, which is at least a bit of a deterrent for crypto miners. I will wait breathlessly to see how none of that does a lick of difference for retail availability March 18th, but it is a bit sad that all of this overshadows the tech specs that we would usually geek out over with a reveal like this. The 6700 XT will have 40 compute units, 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and a quite high 2424 megahertz game clock, but I think it will still be missing the most important feature of all, an add to cart button. Even if you do have a dismal outlook on the availability of the 6700 XT, there was some tangentially related news to speak of that came out along with the announcement. Linus revealed in his video that Fidelity FX, AMD's answer to Nvidia's popular DLSS feature, but for Radeon GPUs this time, has taken a while to roll out because they want to launch across all platforms. That includes desktop GPUs, laptop GPUs, 
and PlayStation 5 and Xbox Sexy Series consoles. AI-based super sampling got off to a rough start with Nvidia's DLSS 1.0, but with the second iteration, it became an almost vital feature to enable at higher resolutions like 4K if you wanted both the visual qualities and the not god-awful frame rates. It's a notable selling point for Nvidia's GPUs over AMDs, so hopefully the Radeon team can nail the rollout and create some parity in this area. Resizable bar support was a unique feature that rolled out when the Radeon 6800 and 6900 XT launched, dubbed Smart Access Memory by AMD. It was actually a native function of the PCI Express spec that just needed to be turned on if the motherboard and GPU both supported it. It was only enabled for Ryzen 5000 series CPUs originally, but Ryzen 3000 series CPUs can now turn it on as well, or they will be able to once you can update your motherboard BIOS to one based on a GSA 1.2.0.1, which should be available soon. As usual, it will be up to your motherboard manufacturer to post the update. AMD says games can see up to a 16% performance bump with a 3000 series CPU 2. That's up from a 10% average boost on the 5000 series. Oh, but you will also need one of those Radeon 6000 series graphics cards too, which I've heard are a little bit hard to track down. Never fear though, Nvidia is joining in on the resizable bar support fun too, starting with the RTX 3060 launch and some 30 series laptops as of last week. There's a short list of games that NVIDIA cards will support this feature on, with more expected to be added later in March, which is also when NVIDIA and board partners will start rolling out drivers and vBIOS updates that will be necessary to enable the feature on existing 30 series GPUs like the RTX 3080. As for platform requirements, if you have an AMD CPU, only Zen 3 5000 series processors on the AMD 400 and 500 series chipsets are compatible, for now, but I'm sure we'll find out soon if that AGISA update for Ryzen 3000 series CPUs works with Nvidia cards as well as Radeons. There's wider support on the Intel side though, as almost all 10th and 11th gen chipsets will gain access to this feature, again with a BIOS update required. Our friends Tim and Steve over at Hardware Unboxed have proven once again that they are not to be trusted, or at least that's the impression that YouTube got, as their tech channel was shadow banned for nearly a week after suspicious activity was detected on February 24th. Two months of recent videos and activity was blocked from the channel, and new posts were not revealed in YouTube searches or subscriber feeds, seriously impacting their view counts and ad revenue. The kerfuffle was covered by Gamers Nexus and a handful of other outlets, but fortunately, after some back and forth with YouTube support, the ban was lifted. Now on the one hand, compromised YouTube channels are often used by scammers to promote well, scams, and many of us have spotted the mysterious cryptocurrency live streams that suddenly pop up on channels that have been hijacked. YouTube's actions would have prevented this if the hardware unboxed channel had actually been compromised, so it's somewhat understandable as an automatic course of action once suspicious activity is detected. On the other hand, if YouTube wants content creators to devote the amount of time necessary to keep a channel going, they need to realize that it's a job and a livelihood for many of us. And the fact that Steve and Tim couldn't even get in touch with anyone directly at YouTube besides generic Google support is troubling. I'm glad that Steve from Gamers Nexus jumped in to help, and this isn't the first time we've seen the tech community come together to aid channels who have been wronged by the platform or by manipulative big tech manufacturers in the past. But it would be nice if YouTube provided some better means of communication for incidents like this in the future. The culprit in this fiasco though? Steve took a vacation, and he logged into their channel from outside, which is clearly an unsecure location and very uncharacteristic compared to Steve's usual post, which is sitting at a test bed running benchmarks 24 seven. So red flags were thrown. It's a red flag on a sailboat. And now it's time for tech briefs, bite-sized news for easy snacking. Inner Mongolia has banned cryptocurrency mining and will shut down all such projects by April. Inner Mongolia, if you didn't know, is one of China's many autonomous regions, popular with large scale crypto operations due to providing some of the cheapest electricity costs in the world, 0.26 to 0.28 yuan or 3.8 to 4 cents per kilowatt hour. Mining operations here account for about 8% of global Bitcoin mining computer power usage, a significant chunk, but those operations might need to relocate soon. Meanwhile, a Bitcoin whale set new records in crypto transaction values in late February, making two transactions via the BitPhoenix exchange. On February 16th, 111,510 Bitcoins worth about $5.4 billion were exchanged. And then on February 27th, 103,510 more Bitcoins worth about 4.9 billion. The previous record was an 88,857 Bitcoin transaction from back in October, which at the time was only worth a paltry 1.1 billion. Of course, we don't really know what the 
these exchanges were actually for unless someone comes out and makes that public. But speculation is that it might have something to do with Tesla's $1.5 billion Bitcoin buy announced at the beginning of February. Bitcoin's price, meanwhile, peaked at $58,000 just about two weeks ago and has since dropped back to around $49,000. AMD's Threadripper Pro high-end desktop CPUs are the best you can get outside of their server parts with eight channel memory and up to 64 cores and 128 threads. But the CPUs, as well as the WRX80 motherboards that they slot into, were only available to system builders and workstation vendors until this week. Global retail availability has now been confirmed, so you can just buy a Threadripper Pro 3995WX for the low, low price of $5,489.99 at Newegg. And assuming you have that much money to spend, uh, you probably will also have enough to buy a motherboard, uh, such as the ASUS Pro WS WRX 80E Sage, which is already up for sale as well, starting at a cool grand. Speaking of Newegg, they are having a big PC game sale right now that uh, I thought you guys might be interested in. The deals are actually pretty good and they're available until Tuesday. And there are some nice bargains like Hitman 2 for $14.39, Red Dead Redemption 2 for 40 bucks, Fallout 4 for $10.79, or GTA 5 with the Criminal Enterprise Starter Pack Bundle for $13.49. Oh, and Tropico 6 for only $22.49. Uh, I will put a link to this sale down in the description. Rounding things out, SpaceX finally nailed the landing on their third attempt with the Starship SN10, touching down successfully after a high altitude test flight Wednesday in South Texas. Watching this huge stainless steel craft maneuver through the air was like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, especially when you consider that the SN10 is actually intended to bring humans to Mars and back, with the end goal being colonization of the Red Planet. Onlookers were definitely impressed, and they were also shocked when moments after touchdown, the starship exploded dramatically in a gigantic fireball, which wasn't really supposed to happen. So still some more work to be done by SpaceX, but hey, it was still a better executed launch than what AMD or Nvidia have managed this year. So there you have it guys, your tech news reserves have been replenished and should last you through the rest of the winter, or at least until next Sunday. Your feedback is always welcome, so feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And since you're already down there, all of the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested in further reading. You can also click the like button. If you enjoyed this video, check out my store at paulshardware.net for an excellent selection of merchandise options, including new beer sets with new coasters. Uh, also subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more tech videos like this in the future. Thanks again again everyone and we'll see you in the next one.